great things happen with 10 days around the country and people gathering for prayer and a time of worship together. But where does the Lord go from there? What happens? What do you see? Sure. So as I shared in the initial experience, I saw a whole city that had stopped everything right. for 10 days to see God's face. Right. We haven't seen that happen yet. This, okay. We just haven't. The model that we've that 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 cities have been working with right now is, you know, you're getting a bunch of people together, like in Boston. We're getting sure. 50 plus churches together right. um, to come together, and they're hosting a night. Right. You know, maybe there's even up to 20 churches co-hosting a night. Right. That's cool. That is great. It's powerful. It's great. Um, but the people who are coming, may, they may just come for one night or two nights. Sure. You know, they're not kind of taking that season to, to just set it apart for God. So what is that like? What does that look like, setting apart for God? What do you mean? Sure. I mean, it basically just means, um, you know, it's almost like you're stopping stuff. You're stopping your school. You're stopping your work. Okay. You're stopping so like your normal Sabbath, rhythms. A Sabbath exactly. concept? Exactly. It's like an extended Sabbath okay. in the presence of God. Why is um, that valuable? Why is that valuable? We are um, called to be in this world, but not of this world. Sure. But we don't recognize to what extent we are of this world right. until we come apart in the presence of God. And stop doing and stop what we doing do. the things of this world. Which exactly. We're caught up in Which they're all today. good. I mean, you know, right. in, in theory, they're all good. It's good to work, it's good to go to school. Um, but by taking a set apart season, we can come apart and get consecrated, get set apart in the presence of God. That's what set apart means, is consecrated, mm. holy, in the presence of God, and kind of obtain a new perspective um, as God is able to unpack some of the things in us. I compare it to like 10 days isn't like um, putting some gas in your car. It's not right. like getting an oil change. Okay. It's like... No, God's saying, hey, come into the shop for a while. So it'd be like going away to the mountains alone right, or something right. and hang out with God. Yeah, yeah. Leave, leave the car for a week. We're going we're gonna to take out the old engine. We're going to put in a new one. Okay. We're going to completely overhaul this baby. It's going to be purring by the time you get back. And I think that's an analogy in our spiritual lives. Um, so I mentioned I hadn't seen this happen mm. at a citywide context. Right. Um, we've seen cool things happen like we shared earlier in cities. But we haven't seen this kind of level of consecration, but I have seen it happen in a retreat setting. Oh, okay. And uh, I wanted Great. to share a little bit about that. Yeah, please do. Um, so a um, couple of different stories. Uh, one, in 2008, we were doing 10 days in a retreat setting. Mm -hmm. And um, we'd done it the year before, so this is our second time doing it this way. And we had you know, a good-sized group of people there, um, probably about 25, 30 20 to 30 that were there, you know, the whole time. Um, others that were there for significant amounts of time. In the evenings, we'd have anywhere from 80 to 100 people kind of coming with people from the community gathering. So away together, like right. Some were some away. were right. We were retreating away. Some were coming. It was an open meeting though, so okay. some people were coming in. Great. Um, and uh, you know, I was frustrated because seven days in, we weren't seeing the same kind of things that we had seen the year before mm. in terms of just the way that God's presence was in the place. And I knew there was more. Mm. And so I entered into this time, this season of, or this prayer time of just kind of groaning, which mm. was very intense. Mm. Not, not my usual uh, quiet time, <laughs> if you will. Um, it was almost like, um, kind of like labor in terms of uh, you wanted more, so exactly. you could only express it through this group. And it was this Holy Spirit thing that was happening. Little did I know, other people around the whole building were experiencing some, something similar wow. the same morning. Little did I know, because I was just experiencing it myself. That afternoon, we experienced what I can only describe as an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Where just a sovereign thing, where God just began to pour out. Okay. Different gifts were being released. Um, okay. Different things were, were coming to different people. So you weren't checking your email? I wasn't checking my email. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I could result, have cared less about my email you at could that have point. Cared less. That's right. And then that night we had this continue, this kind of outpouring continue, yeah. but with a sign. And uh, uh -huh. a young man, a uh, friend of mine, 
got up, Josiah Armstrong, um, and he just had this word from the Lord that God was going to send rain in the natural mm. as a sign of what he was doing spiritually. Wow. And as soon as he said that, it was like the smell of rain filled the room. Really? And you heard, it... you heard everyone in the room just go, <gasps> because they all smelled the smell at the same time. Was it time. really raining out? Or... It was not raining outside. Wow. And in fact, I went outside because I was so curious. <laughs> I went outside and I looked up and there, was, there had not been a cloud in the sky all day. It had been a very hot day. Wow. And there wasn't a cloud in the sky at that point. So you knew something was afoot. So something, exactly. <laughs> so I knew something was afoot. So we continued on in prayer and worship and the presence of God continued. just. To, and I was like just thinking, ah, this is the thing I was longing for. And now ah, we're getting right. it. We're getting this sense of outpouring of God's grace being poured out on us. Once again, the longing, the humility leading to that. He was grace to the humble. And as I was going to bed that night, the mm. rain came. Wow. So it did come. It came in a soft, gentle, soaking rain. It kind of reminded me of the way the water is described in Eden. It's very gentle. Yes. And it was, so it was a gentle, soothing, soothing rain that God was pouring out. But the next three days um, in that gathering, it was some of just the heaviest sense of God's presence, of God being among us that I've honestly, that I've ever experienced. So it broke things open. It broke things the open. The atmosphere changed. It completely changed. People that before had been uh, skeptical or hesitant right. about certain things were now coming to me just like explain what happened because that was crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was like... <laughs> I smelt it too. <laughs> There was, they're like, how did he know it was going to rain? And so it was like, well, sometimes God speaks to us. And, you know, or, you know, just different things like that. And so it completely went from trying to, all right, Lord, get us on the same page. to now we were on the same page mm. in this really heavy sense of grace. And so I think when we think about that image of the city glowing, that's mm. the kind of thing we're talking about, is this mm. intense outpouring of the glory yes. and presence of God that's going to come. And this is the kind of thing that happens when we take time to be set apart. Right. It didn't happen on day one. It didn't happen right. on day two. Right. Day three, right. it happened on day seven and eight. That's when it happened. And there was something about persevering and right. asking and waiting in humility right. that led to that happening. It was almost like God kicked it up a notch when he heard your and others' prayers uh, in desperation. Like, is this it? Right. Is all we're going to see this? Right, these right. seven days? It's like... And my prayer was, Lord, this is my prayer. Lord, if we can't see John 17 unity here... What are we going to see? When all we're doing is praying. Right. <laughs> That's all we're doing. <laughs> and we're still not experiencing it. How, how is the church ever going to experience it? That was my prayer. And, and, and here's the thing. That prayer didn't come just from me. That was the Holy Spirit in sure. me. Sure. Crying out. And other 10-day gatherings we did like this didn't have this same kind of manifestation. There were other things God did. So this is not like, if we just do this, we'll manufacture that. Sure. This was a sovereign thing with our participation and partnership where God right. did something unique. And I love when God responds to the heart. Right. The compassionate heart, the longing heart, even a frustrated heart. Sure, sure. A lot of times that frustration comes out of like love you know right. it wasn't like lord strike these people we down desire or, more yeah. it was just like no like there was a it was a it's got to be more there's got to be more bring the more mm -hmm. and he 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 did bring it um that's in really, that in that scenario that's really encouraging uh, to hear that so what what i'm longing to see is if that happened in a retreat sure that can happen in a city okay but the difference is in a city is that you don't go home afterwards right you stay and remain in that place. And I just believe that that same sense of God's weight and presence, mm. the unity that was there, the power, the, the kind of different miraculous things were happening. Mm. People were getting gift. It was, it was like a mini Pentecost, if you will. Right. That right. that power would remain with that group of people. Continue. Continue, and then that people would be sent out. Like a wellspring. Right, exactly, exactly. Mm. And um, as we study examples of transformation happening in different parts of the world, 
where we're seeing revivals is some people have said what's happening in the world right now globally in the church it's like the book of acts plus <laughs> like it's it's over and above so it's it's the things we read about and more right. and um when we when we hear about those stories i think we just need to say well if that can happen in africa if that can right. happen in indonesia that can happen here sure that can happen here if we're willing to seek him I want to. I want to jump in that pool. I want to get in that rainstorm. I know. <laughs> Where does everybody shower when I'm on? <laughs> oh man. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I have no idea to this day. Like, was that smell of rain? Was that supernatural, or was it just like the rain was coming and the timing was perfect? I have no idea. Oh, it sounds like it definitely was God. But it was obviously God. Either way. <laughs> Great. Well, um, I guess let me just, let's just close in prayer. Um, and um, my prayer is this, just this, Father. I know that you've um, given me these, this call and these experiences. And Lord, I know that you want to release this kind of an outpouring of your spirit, Lord, not just in, in small groups of people, not just to 120 people somewhere, Lord, but you want to release this, Lord, in whole cities, in whole major groups of people. And so, Father, we just pray that you'd release your grace, yes, um, Lord, to your people. Well. Release your grace to gatherers, Lord, in these cities to hear this call and to invite others um, to join in, Father. I just think of that scripture, Zechariah 8, uh, 20 to 23. Just that simplicity of the fact that we are going to go and seek the Lord, and it would just be better if you all joined us. We want you to come and seek Him with us uh, from city to city. So, Father, just release grace. Yes. For your people to gather in this way, Lord. Um, Pour out on us, Lord. Pour yes. out a flood, Lord. Let it be uh, greater and greater, mm. ever increasing. Yes. In Jesus. Yes, I'm just reminded, um, it's a powerful experience. I'll, I'll close with this. I was traveling in California, sharing about 10 days, and yeah. I had shared. And this woman, uh, she was a pastor's wife. I didn't, you know, I didn't know her. She was uh, Asian and um, uh, ethnically, uh, but American culturally. And... Uh, she just uh, had this word for me, and she shared the word. She said, the Lord is just saying that the beginning of this movement, this 10 days movement, mm. will bring these gentle, refreshing rains. Mm. But by the end, mm. it's going to be this powerful outpouring. It'll be like, as though mm. a waterfall were just wow. coming from heaven. And so that's where I believe we're going. And I think as we see cities start to respond to this mm. in this way that we've seen in a smaller context, we're going to see that waterfall begin to pour out. Yeah, All in God's timing. He's, he's driving the bus, of course, but it's cool to get to partner with him in this and oh, yeah. be a part of uh, seeing these things happen. Yeah, it's going to be amazing when we see these things happen. Absolutely. Even maybe on the news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't go that far, brother. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All righty. Well, thanks, everybody, for... Um, just watching these videos. I hope that you've been inspired and we just pray that God will just advance what he's doing in your city, um, in your region, uh, through what you've heard today.